Welcome back. Here we are, ready to start our scanning phase. We have covered the information gathering, which was first phase of penetration testing, and now we will proceed with the second stage by scanning our target and trying to get even more information about it. Now, the difference between information gathering and scanning is that scanning is performed on a much deeper level. And also, while in the first phase we gathered all kinds of information, such as emails, phone numbers and a bunch of other things, in the scanning we are mainly focused on technology side. So we want to find out as much as we can about our target's technical aspect. We are going to talk about in just a second as to what exactly are we looking for in this stage and what are all the goals of this stage. But first, you could be wondering what are we going to scan? Since, remember, that scanning is something that we are not allowed to do on any target that we want. Don't worry, for this stage and any future stage from now on, we are going to be using vulnerable virtual machines. There are lots of paid vulnerable virtual machines that you can buy and test on, but for this course I will be showing the free ones. So all of us can download them, install them and then try to hack them. All of these virtual machines are going to be running some outdated vulnerable software that we will be able to exploit in the third stage and they will also require very little hardware power. So all of us will be able to run them while also running Kali Linux. And keep in mind that penetration testing process will look exactly like it would look in real world if you were to test some website or some network. The only difference is that right now we know that these machines are vulnerable since I just told you and in real world you wouldn't essentially know that before testing them. However, just knowing they are vulnerable doesn't really help us as we need to figure out in what way are they vulnerable and how can we take advantage of that. Scanning will help us with this. We will be using our Kali Linux machine to scan these machines. And by scanning these machines what I really mean is we're going to directly exchange packets with our target and once that target sends packets back to us, hopefully it will discover something about the target machine that we will find useful. And what we will be sending to the target are TCP and UDP packets. TCP and UDP are just protocols that are used for sending bits of data, also known as packets. And we will discuss them in a little more detail in the next video. For now, just think of them as different communication protocols that will allow us to get information from our target. I keep talking about information and scanning and all of that without actually explaining what do I mean by scanning and getting information. What are the goals of this? What are we looking for exactly? Well, we're looking for open ports. And I don't mean USB ports or some physical ports, I mean we are looking for virtual open ports that every machine has and it uses them to host their software and communicate with other machines over internet. For example, you watching this over internet on a website means that the machine that's hosting this website has port 80 open. Why port 80? Well, port 80 is used to host a web server. It is used for HTTP and it's also known as HTTP port. So every time you visit a website, you are essentially making a connection to that machine hosting that website on port 80 or on port 443, since port 80 is used for HTTP and port 443 is used for HTTPS. And HTTPS is just a secure version of HTTP. These are the two most usual ports that target that you're scanning externally will have open and by externally scanning I mean that you're scanning it while not being in the same network as the target. An example would be you scanning some website from your home. And a port that could sometimes be open if you're scanning internally, which means either scanning machines on your network or you're performing network penetration testing inside of some company, you could for example find port 21 to be open. This is an FTP port and it's used for file transferring. FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. These are just two of the ports and there are a lot of them. 
you could, for example, have port 22 open, which is SSH port or secure shell port. It is used to log into the target machine and execute commands on it remotely. We could also have, for example, port 53 open, which is DNS port. Or we could have port 25 open, which is SMTP port. So there are a lot of ports. Matter of fact, every machine has 65,535 ports for both TCP and UDP. And if there is just one open port with one vulnerable software running on that open port, then that target is vulnerable and it could be exploited. Now, the highest secured machines are the ones that have all ports closed. These are usually your home devices, such as laptops or computers that you use just for browsing online or playing video games or something. They don't need to be hosting any software since they are not a server that someone will connect to for a certain service. They're just home devices that you use. But websites, for example, must have port 80 or port 443 open since they are hosting a web page there. Also in companies, their machines could have some port open. Maybe they use that port on all their machines within that company to internally transfer files between different machines. It could be anything basically. Now, the problem occurs if that software they use on their open ports is outdated and has a vulnerability. Then our job as a hacker is to scan that machine for open ports and exploit that machine through that vulnerable software running on that open port. But the goal for now in the scanning section is only to scan the target for the open ports. Then we want to discover what software are they running on those open ports. And we want to go as deep as discovering what version of software is on that open port. Are you ready? We're going to be covering a lot in this section. And in this section, we will cover one of the most important tools that a hacker must master. That tool is called Nmap. Let's dive into scanning. 